This episode of the Anarchy Garage is the first of four parts of how to make a go-kart road legal. <laughs> Welcome to part one of how to build your own anarchy cart. Now, the anarchy cart is something that we've been thinking about for years, haven't we? How much fun is a go-kart in general? And we thought, surely you can make these things road legal. And here it is, the UK's first road legal go-kart. And we're going to show you how to do it over the next three episodes. Okay, so the first thing that you actually need to do is buy yourself a go-kart. Now, <laughs> we found out this is the worst one you can buy. <laughs> and there are a few things that we're going to help you with in this episode of how to buy the right go-kart and make it easier for you. Okay, so when you're going to be going to look for a go-kart, uh, there's a few key things to look for. Um, one, obviously, there's loads of different go-karts out there. This, for instance, is a pro kart, so it's running two Honda GX160 engines. You can obviously find most commonly is a, another Rotax one, which is more single engine, two stroke. So it depends on really what you want to go for. But like I say, shop around, see what you're going to be finding and what's going to work best for you personally. But one thing that you do need to make sure that the first thing that you look for for these when you go and look at one, check that it's completely level. And then what it's going to do is when it's completely flat, you'll notice that if it's not level, one of the wheels will be sat up slightly off or something like that, which says that the, the chassis is twisted. So straight away a no-go. The only other thing to check for, same as you would do with a normal car, is just go around, check all the chassis welds. So you don't want to see any cracks, excessive uh, rust, any missing welds is an easy one as well, because straight away it's just going to fail its MOT when you come to putting it through. So avoid all that, but just do your homework, do your research, make sure you're getting the right car to start with. Trick tip number one, is buy a go-kart that's got four brakes. Um, as we said before, it's actually gonna, we bought the hardest go-kart to work on, but it is the most common. So if you can find one that's got all brakes all around, happy days, it's gonna make everything a lot easier for you. But for the purpose of the most common ones, we're gonna show you how to get a go-kart that had no front brakes and actually make them yourself. Well, Slate is building the bracket for the rear uh, handbrake. I'm actually going to show you just how easy it is to change these um, non-breaking front wheels into breaking front wheels. So nice and simple, just release the bolts that are holding this in. I have slackened these off prior to this just to show you. So drop that one out. So it's literally two bolts and everything will come off like so and then your new flashy brakes for the front should come built up in a kit like that so exactly the same as it was you will find when you're bolting the stub axle on that it will probably come with a set of washers so just make sure that you're using the right stuff to get it nice and snug in there so you don't get any play and then it's just as simple as tightening everything back together and you've got yourself a set of front brakes on your go-kart and you're one step closer to taking your anarchy car out on the road. Right, so as Shep said, we do need to have brakes on this and they need to work on all four corners. Now, if you have brakes on a car, that might be on a hand control. That is absolutely fine. It will pass MOT and DVSA with that, so don't worry about that. Now, if you're fitting brakes, what you want to look for, first of all, the way we've done this is we've actually found brakes off a different cart manufacturer and bought the full kit. So that comes with a stub axle, an actual hub, so this is the hub, carrier, and then separate calipers on top. This is actually a hydraulic system, so this has now got a second master cylinder that is now linked in to the foot brake. Something else to consider when you're doing your front brakes. Now, you don't have to use cart brakes. The reason I say that is, if you have a look online, there's loads of different kits available for quads, ATVs, and even push bikes. Now, if you can adapt one of these kits onto your front wheels or onto your front hubs, that is a far more efficient way of doing it as far as cost. 
So, although these are available, they're quick and easy to put on, they are expensive, but you yourself, if you're capable or you know somebody who can help you out, you can put different brakes on the front. It needs to provide 50% of the efficiency of braking under a decelerometer. Now, that's important at the MOT stage, but this rear axle is so efficient already, pretty much as long as those brakes are stopping and are helping, and the cart doesn't skid, there's no reason why it won't pass. So if you do your homework, look into other types of brakes and you can save yourself some money. Okay, so next step for your Anarchy cart at home is a handbrake. Uh, so if you refer back to the MSVA the same as we did, you find out that you actually have to have one um, independent brake in for the handbrake. So you can go to any of the wheels that you want, you can mount it however you want. We've got a little Diddy handbrake that we fitted to this thing, which we'll show you in a second, but we're gonna actually get the disc on to separate them today. Okay, so the disc we're actually going for, we're gonna have a separate disc on the rear axle. Now these discs are really easy to come by if you look into the carting wheel, so measure whatever rear axle you have. We've measured this up, this is actually made by a company called OKE, so this mounts in there. So what we're going to do next, we're going to actually unbolt the entire rear stub axle and get this in the middle. Right, so I'm just putting the new disc onto the carrier. I'm just going to bolt that to that. As it sits, we can slide that onto the rear axle, rig everything back up, happy days. Right, so the axle is back in now. Um, we've now got a secondary disc on here, which is gonna be just for the handbrake. I've managed to find a little handbrake online. It was only six pounds. It's designed for an ATV. So if you type in ATV handbrake and universe online, you should be able to find one of these really quickly. I've mounted that on the side of the frame here. So it bolts through the hole for one of the side rails. I've drilled a hole through the actual frame itself, nut and bolted it on both ends. So that's my handbrake. That's now the rear axle locked in place with three clicks, so it works really, really well. The actual caliper itself is now mounted on the back as well. That I've had to actually weld brackets on the back for this. Now, you would be able to bolt something onto it, but I wanted this to be secure, and obviously it's got to go through the MSVA, so as long as you've built something that is secure and is safe and it will pass an MOT, it'll be absolutely fine. There are also certain elements where if you look through the MSVA, it only has to lock one wheel. And because it's a locking device, you could, by all means, put a bar onto one of these little handbrakes, put it on the edge here, and as long as it locks onto the tire, that would pass. There's no reason why it wouldn't. We are gonna check that later on the MOT, but maybe if you just speak to an MOT, you might find out. Getting the right go-kart is everything, as Shep said. So finding out one which is level, hasn't any damage, is a massive thing for when it goes to the MOT. But, after that, you need to make sure you're looking at a good car, and this is a manufactured car. Now, the reason that is so important for you and for us is it has its own frame number. Now, this is actually the game changer of why these are actually very easy to put on the road. The frame number, if you go back to your manufacturer, they will write you a certificate of conformity. They also will provide you, if it's a brand new car or a new car, a receipt. The frame rail is your VIN number for the road. Now, as long as it's got six digits and above, you can register these things. So what you need to do is identify where the VIN number is. Now, every cart manufacturer has a different place to put it. So I'm going to show you a couple of these as well. First of all, some of them actually have them on the back of the hub at the front or on the main structural rail on here. Another place for them is down the sides. But the main place you're going to see it is actually down the back behind the seat and by the axle. Now. 
All of those places need to be checked and whatever cart you're looking at, make sure it's there and in good condition. If it is a good manufactured cart, you'll have no problems finding a VIN. So my VIN number took a little bit of finding on the Pro Cart. Now the Pro Cart one is actually on the back behind the seat down here. Now, what's really incredible is they've actually, when they powder coated the frame, they powder coated over the VIN number as well. So these are very hard to spot. What I'm actually going to be doing before it goes for its MOT, I'm gonna get a pick and kind of pick all of the numbers out to make sure the powder coat's out because it has to be clearly visible for the MOT and for the DVSA. Okay, so now that all the brakes are done, you can get onto a really, really fun part of building your own Anarchy cart. And the great thing about these is the customization on them is completely endless. Yeah, so with these, you can do everything you want and push it as far as you want to. So you may have noticed through the filming so far, we have no pods on this. Now, the reason for that is We've actually had all of the pods sent away as soon as we managed to get our hands on this <laughs> and they've gone off to Lee Morgan Artworks where we're going to head now. So we're here today with Lee from uh, Lee Morgan Artworks. Yep, so Lee has just finished all of our go-kart parts or anarchy car parts, so we're gonna go and check them out for the first time right now. Right then Lee, um, just talk me through how you've managed to <laughs> do the incredible do this. Uh, yeah. Right, okay. Um, so obviously they arrived, they were um, used cart parts and carts get bashed all the time as anyone that's ever been near one knows. Yeah, it's far um, from perfect. Yeah, it's <laughs> far from perfect, but the main criteria with this sort of stuff is will it stick and then from there you can build on top. Seeing these in person is phenomenal. I, you know, no matter how good our cameras are, you're not going to pick this up. The, you know, Lee's talent is un, unmatchable in my opinion here. How did you come up with the, you know, the design? Because we did kind of give you free, well, full free well, burn on this, didn't we? So. Well, what I got given was, um, you can do whatever you like. But I'm a big believer in if you have some something on there, an element on there, you've got to have a reason for the element. So obviously if you look on the centre of the car um, front, there's then a dragon really deep in the black that's then breathing the fire out, which is then causing the flames on these three and the front part that's just out there. So the fire is very, very... Um, you've got to be as random as you possibly can. Um, with fire, you can end up with it looking like Swiss cheese in a split second. Yeah. So you, you work it. There's about seven or eight layers on there um, to get the flames to look like they do. So they're really, really deep. You can see all the way down to the base. Mm -hmm. um, the base first blew up put on, which when you put it on, you can't see it. So you spray it on and you just trust the fact that when you lacquer trust it, the process. they're going to be there. Yeah. When you're doing the flames, you do a layer of flames and then you've got to ignore those flames. You can't look at those flames because right. you'll end up copying them. Right. Okay. And then you end up with the same pattern and the pattern doesn't look like true fire and then... I suppose your expire is unpredictable, isn't so it? So you've got to go a layer, forget the layers on there, do another layer and so on. And just make sure that you don't start doing the same thing repetitively or in the right. way. So it can be a challenge it, it's, it's easy, so right. but it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's a case of go for it and, you know, after a lot and lots and lots of practice, um, <laughs> you can get half good like I am. That's it then, so we're now ready to go and fit these parts back on the Anarchy cart. Pretty breathtaking, I think you'll agree. So the side panels, we can't run by the looks of it because at the minute the wheels are scrubbing. 
I'm going to see if I can carry on adapting it because it would be lovely to actually have these side panels on when it goes for its MSVA, but it's easier sometimes to just leave things off. It can pass and then we can work around them afterwards because I don't want to go cutting up the mug with this fresh paint. So side panels we're not sure on. Front panels, absolutely clear with these wheels on. But yeah, just look at that thing. Absolutely wow. Just look at it. This thing is going on the road. Can you believe it? So that's it for part one of the Anarchy Cart build. On the next part, we're going to be showing you how to locate the lights in the right location and also how to start wiring your cart up so it's ready for its first MOT.